Today we're going to be making an enemy targeting system, like you would see in a game like Zelda or pretty much any other RPG. I have a pre-built scene with some simple AI setup and a third person character. If you'd like to see how I made this, I have a whole tutorial all about camera systems. To start we're going to add a few objects that we'll need later. Select your enemy and add an empty. Then just place it right above the enemy and parent it to the enemy object. Add a plane and give it a texture. I made a quick arrow in Photoshop. You can also just use a cone if you don't have an image. Now let's jump into the logic node window. Add a new logic tree by clicking the new button and give it a name that describes it well so it's a lot easier to find later. Select your player object in the dashboard window and click apply to select it. Add a rotate to node and set the object to your character rig. If your character doesn't have a rig just select the model. Then add a key down node and a check distance node. To connect everything add an and node. This function will tell the player to track an object when the key is pressed while also being a certain distance away. Set the check distance to ab less than distance and add a get world position node then duplicate it. We want to check the distance that the player is from the enemy. That way the player has to be within range to activate the targeting system. For the A input, just set it to the person icon to reference itself. Then for the B input, select the enemy object. For the key down node, change key tap to key down. And select the key you want to use to activate the lock system. Then duplicate the get position node and connect it to the target socket of the rotate 2 node. Then select your enemy object. When we test the game, you can see that the player now locks onto the enemy. But there's still a small issue. When we walk away from the enemy, the player is no longer facing the right direction. To fix this, duplicate the rotate 2 node and the get position node. Set the position node to self, then set the front to the negative y axis. This may be different for you if your player is facing a different direction. Just test each one until you get the desired result. Now let's add a not node. We want the rig to go back to its original position after we unlock it from an enemy. To do so, connect the not to the and socket, then the not to the rotate to condition. When we test the game, we can see that the player tracks the enemy, and when we unlock, the player is facing the right direction. Now that we have all that working, let's make it so the arrow pops up above the enemy when we lock on. To do this, add a raycast node. Then duplicate two of the get position nodes and connect one into the origin socket and the other into the aim socket. We want the origin to be the player object's location and the aim to be set to the enemy's location. Check the visualize option to see the raycast in the game. Add a set position node, duplicate a get position node, and then connect them. Connect the has result of the raycast to the condition of the set position node. For the get position node, we will connect the picked object to it. For the raycast property, call it enemy. This way the raycast will only interact with objects that have the property enemy. Select your enemy object and give it a new property and call it enemy as well. Now connect the and to the condition of the raycast. When we play the game, we can see a green line showing the raycast as we run around the enemy. Select the arrow above the enemy and set it to no collision. Then go to the set position node and select the arrow object. You can see that the arrow is now being set to the center of the enemy. This is where the empty comes in. Move the set position over and add a get child by name node. Then connect it between the get position and raycast node. For the child object, select the empty that we parented to the enemy object. It looks a lot better now, but when we unlock from the enemy, the arrow floats in the air until we lock onto the enemy again. So we need to add two visibility nodes. Connect one to the end socket and select the arrow. Then set it to visible. Connect the other visibility node to the not node. Select the arrow and leave it on not visible. Awesome, it only appears when we target the enemy. But I always want the arrow to be facing towards the camera. To do this, duplicate the rotate to node and add a get position node. Connect it to the target and select the arrow as the rotating object. Then connect the condition to the and socket. Well, it rotates, but not quite the way we want it to. to. Fix the rotation, just go back to the get position node and select the camera. The arrow will always phase the camera now. But we just need to fix one last issue. When we add another instance of an enemy, you can see that we can't target it. That is because the nodes only reference the main enemy object. To fix this, add a collision node and change it from once to each frame. Now set the cursor to the player and add a cube. Scale it up and make it flat. And in object settings, change it from textured to wire. That way it's easier to see everything. Now parent the new cube to the player object. I called this cube tracking sensor. Select the tracking sensor for the collision object. Then set the property to enemy and connect the colliding socket to all the get position nodes with the enemy selected. Oh my goodness. Make sure the tracking sensor is set to sensor in the physics property settings. Then select detect actors and activate box collisions. Now you can target any enemy in the game. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, think about checking out some of my other tutorials. Anyways, I've been Lox and I'll see you in the next video.